In 2009, there was a violent, unfortunate murder at the Sandalwood Terrace Apartments. It was a young boy who had a mistaken identity. He lost his life. It became a very frightening place for people to go to, and I learned that the children there were very hungry. So I made a commitment, no matter what, I would figure out a way to get to Sandalwood Terrace Apartments and feed those families. And so with the help of the Buford Housing Authority, they gave me a small community room, and I began feeding five families there that day. And that's how I began. Well, from five families, we grew to over 700 families. We've had to change locations three times. That's something that's very unstable for me, but today we're at Queen Chapel AME on Beach City Road, right in the Mitchellville section. Uh, the families that come to me uh, have real needs, health concerns. Uh, they don't have air conditioning. Many live in trailers that are very unsafe and unstable. Uh, they don't have ramps for their wheelchairs or if they're in walkers or, or using canes. Um, I can see as time's gone by, uh, I've watched them age far more rapidly than people who, I want to use the word in a very careful way, privileged, uh, doesn't uh, move as rapidly. Uh, many of my people have diabetes. Uh, many have had amputations. Uh, so I've watched the decline uh, because of the conditions. Uh, where heat wouldn't bother other people with air conditioning, it's devastating for some of my people. Um, I've watched grandparents raise grandchildren, uh, and I've watched a new Hispanic population come into the pantry. Uh, many of them are immigrant, illegal immigrants, and are very fearful of people knowing where they live, uh, what they're doing, and so it's become even more diverse than when I first began, and I also see more need now uh, that I hadn't seen before. Uh, with regard to so many issues. Well, I say I coined the phrase resiliency for humanity because on Hilton Head, where we're located in the Mitchellville area, often Habitat for Humanity is building homes. And so I felt, my goodness, um, resiliency for humanity is my cause. Um, what I have found, we did a hunger race for the first time two months ago. It was our first one and very successful. We did it at Mitchellville Fish Hall Park, and it was a five, ten mile K run. We had an enormous turnout, but I wanted the people running and supporting the pantry to see where my people live. And they were astonished because they had never gone down those roads before, and they were overwhelmed with what they had seen because they're used to seeing beautiful villas and homes, and it quite took them by surprise. It did open their hearts and their eyes uh, to see a side of Hilton Head that they had never seen before. I will say many even felt a little unsafe. I giggled about that because I thought they couldn't be more safe <laughs> right now uh, with these people who are so filled with love. But it was an eye-opener for me too, uh, not being aware how unaware so many islanders were with what is right in their backyard. And uh, so the Mitchellville people, I often say this, we want to put new roads in for them and concrete roads, but they say, you know, Miss Nanette, it was a lot cooler walking to you when the roads were dirt. The water ran off a lot easier when there was dirt. And so I think that it's so critical to listen to the great wisdom whether it be their crabbing, when they come to the food pantry, they're excited to get old, smelly chicken, but I make sure it's just for crabbing. Uh, they can teach us so much about how to preserve and how to renew. And I always say that I do believe what they've taught me is people more than things need to be renewed, revived, reclaimed, redeemed, but never thrown out. And I think we must be very mindful that there are no throwaways. You know, every human life is precious. I do have a recipe for that. 
I think communication is key. But I think more important than communication is there has to be a bond built and a trust created. I think when a people who are most at risk, who do the least amount to affect climate change, suffer the most unbearable suffering, I think at that time you have to look at who are the people they come to week after week that they trust. They trust will have their back if a Category 2, 3, or 4 hurricane hits Hilton Head. I don't want to wonder if the people I love, the people I serve, will be safe because of chance. I want them to be safe because of choice. And I believe when they trust somebody, they will listen to those people. They will do what is best and good for their family and for their pets. But I think when they don't have that, I think they look at their past and what has done and what they were able to rely on, and I think it falls short all too often. I think it's going to be a long time until the people can gain that kind of trust from those kinds of organizations, but I'll go back to the very small local community. When you can find a couple key people, and I would say myself included, who literally can have one foot in their tribe with their people, and then another foot in the community, in the local officials, in, in, in those people who make rules and establish certain protocol. I think that's when you can make an effect change. I don't think you can without that middle person who people have come to trust, who have shown up for them, who have been there for them in times of need. And it's not just for food. It's for love, for care, for spiritual guidance. It's, it's, it's so much more. I say we nourish the bodies, minds, and spirits of all who hunger. And it isn't just a hunger for food. It's a hunger for understanding. It's a hunger for, do you hear me? Can you hear what I'm saying? Are you listening to me? I don't feel like you're listening to me. Just recently, I really advocated very strongly for a candidate I thought would make effective change in one of our wards. His granddaddy was the first one to ferry people from Defusky Island to Hilton Head Island. I worked tirelessly. Unfortunately, he didn't make it this time, but that won't make us stop. Because we need people first in offices who care about those things. It isn't enough to call our local uh, uh, community assembly men and, and representatives if they don't have their heart in it for what we, we need. We need the people first to be appointed who do care about the culture, the richness, the beauty, the people. Go from there. So that's what I'll continue to work on too.